Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Isaiah 49, verses 8. Now the Bible says in Isaiah 49, verses 8, That saith the Lord, He says, In unacceptable time have I had thee. And in a day of salvation have I helped thee. He says, and I will preserve thee, and I will give thee for a covenant of the people. The Bible says, to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. Praise the Lord. That thou may say to the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger, nor thirst, neither shall they heat, nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a promise. But you see, it begins with the acceptable time in which the Lord hears men. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says, in the acceptable time have I had thee. In the acceptable time have I had thee. And in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And with all this comes the promises that come with men that God hears. And how they set the prisoners free. And bring those which are in darkness out into light. And feed the hungry and thirsty spiritually and physically. And the heat and the sun smites them not. The Lord has mercies on them and leads them. Even by the springs of water he guides them. He makes all his mountains away. And highways are exalted. Etc. Etc. Because God had men in an acceptable time. Tell your neighbor, acceptable time. Tonight I want to teach about the time dimension. Hallelujah. Now, these are fourth dimensional realities of the spirit. The world is third dimensional. And I know you all know that. Any man under the sun with a very clear mind can and is able to design the three-dimensional lines of the spirit. The time dimension is the fourth dimension. But many Christians or believers do not know how to function in that timing of the spirit. And the Bible says, redeem the time for the days are worse, are evil. God has called us to bring to the redemption of time. Tell your neighbor, you must know how to redeem time. Tell him again, you must know how to redeem time. Now the Bible says in Psalms 90, uh, verse 12, he says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Say amen. God says, teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days, that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, the Hebrew word there for numbering of days is manao, which means to appoint, to account, praise God, to tell, to prepare our days. Hallelujah. So God is saying, teach us to prepare our days, teach us to assign our days, teach us to tell our days, teach us to appoint our days, teach us to prepare our days, teach us to recon 
our days. Teach us to count our days that we might apply our hearts and to wisdom. In other words, I always say this, that there is a wisdom that comes to the heart that has known to number days. But to number days is a divine teaching. He did not say cause us to number our days. He did not say remind us to number our days. He did not say command us to number our days. He says teach us to number our days. Hallelujah. When we are told to number our days, some people think that scripture means that you count how many days you have on the earth, and then God starts to explain to you what you are supposed to do in each day of your life. That is not the meaning of manal. That is not the meaning of appointing. Appointing or to number days is the ability that is exercised by the mature spirit to be able to determine your days. Who has understood what I just said? To determine your days. In other words, God has given you the ability, according to his word, to be able to determine your next tomorrow, your next day, to be able to determine how your next five years are going to look like. It's in you to appoint your days. But you must learn how. Somebody shout amen. And so God has to teach you. He has to teach you. There are people who live in the world of whatever will be, will be. Kesara, sara, whatever will be, will be. Ah, if I make it, I make it. If I don't make it, nah, eh. I don't know. I cannot tell what tomorrow will hold. No. That is not the supposed life of the Christian faith. The Christian faith is not supposed to guess tomorrow. The Christian day is supposed to speak tomorrow into existence. Yeah, let me explain it. There was a time days never existed on earth. Isn't it? There was a time. Days never existed on earth. And God spoke days into being. And he spoke the existence of night, separated the light from darkness, and the darkness became night, and the light became day. Are you hearing me? The spiritual. In the 14th verse, he even starts to create the days of men. Then he created light, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the greater light of the sun to rule by the day of men, and the lesser lights to rule by night, which are the stars and the moon, which is the night of men. And he says, and these shall be for signs, for days, for seasons, for years, for human beings. He created days for man. How were days made? They were spoken into existence. When you become one with God, when you understand what it means to be one with God, it means tomorrow you have the ability to speak into existence certain phenomena in your life and you will see it come to pass when you understand who you are in God. It's a deliberate exercising of the spirit to learn how, but when you do, you change the ages. You change your times. You change the world. You impact generation. Why? Because you have learned to speak into your day. You've learned to speak into your morning. You've learned to speak into your afternoons. You've learned to speak into your seasons. You've learned to speak into your experiences. You've learned to speak into your future. That is why I tell people, some people wait for somebody to prophesy into their future. Others have learned how to create their future. That when a prophet comes, it's only confirming what they've already created. Can I say it again? There's someone who is looking for a man of God to tell them what's going to happen to them next year. And there is a man on the same surface of the earth who says next year, be. Next week, be this way. Next month, be this way. And a prophet will come and only confirm what the man spoke into existence. For the Sunamite child would not be dead even to the prophet because she spoke into the day like the whole day. Even when her child died, she kept saying all is well. Because she kept saying all is well, 
She commanded the spirit realm to respond to the day she held in the spirit realm. Even when she went to the prophet, the prophet says, For the Lord will not let me know of anything befalling her. He has hidden anything from me. How would the Lord tell her that she has lost her son if she has refused in the spirit to recognize the death of her own child? Tell your neighbor, learn to speak into your day. It is something by reason of understanding when you practice and exercise yourself, you learn. And when you do, your next two years are guaranteed. Your next three years are guaranteed. Remember when we had just started Fanero, I told people, give us only five years. Oh, we spoke that into existence. It wasn't a vision. No, it was faith. Somebody said hallelujah. But you learn to speak into your future. Learn to warn your tears. Learn to warn your shoes. Learn to look at your clothes and tell them, watch me now. Because something is going to change in a few weeks, in a few years, and you will be there to witness in the mighty name of Jesus. Learn to speak at the tree in your compound. Learn to speak at your picture. Learn to look into the mirror and speak to yourself that the communication of your faith becomes effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, which is in Christ. If God spoke these things into being, there is no other way. There is no other way. You just learn to prepare your spirit. And energize it, you build it up enough to speak a word. Some of you, your next miracle is in what you're going to confess in the next 10 seconds. Go! Yes. And it was. And the Lord saw that it was good. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout amen, glory to God. Somebody's destiny has changed in seconds. Just like that? Yeah. Just like that. And God said, let there be, and it was just like that? Yeah. And it was just like that. So what is intercession? Intercession is thanksgiving of the things you spoke. And then as you're thanking, you speak more. <laughs> glory! I say glory. Somebody shout amen. Shout amen. That is why I tell people, if a preacher makes a confession and you know you want it to touch your life, repeat it immediately. Don't even wait for it to go. Because that's the moment of the Spirit. Somebody said hallelujah. For the words that are spoken, they are spirit and life. Say amen. Say amen. And so the psalmist tells us it's actually a teaching. Teach us two number. Teach us two number. Teach us two number. Teach us to appoint our days. Hallelujah. And right there he was talking about the time dimension. When we study the Greek language, there are two words that define time. The first word in the Greek that defines time is chronos. Tell your neighbor chronos. And chronos means a specific amount of time. A specific amount of time. For example, a day. That's chronos. 24 hours of a day, that minute, that second, that hour, all of that is chronos. So if I say, today is good, specifically this day or this hour is good, I could refer to chronos to mean that particular amount of time and that appears 54 times in the new testament for example in the book of matthew chapter 2 verse 7 when herod was looking for the boy and the wise men were looking for the boy the bible says herod when he had privately called the wise men the bible says he inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared the word therefore time is chronos what time did the star appear he's trying to ask what time specifically? Was it noon? Was it morning? Was it tending to moon? Was it night? Was it beginning of night, evening? Was it late night? 
Was it around midnight? Was it 4 a.m.? He was trying to find out what time specifically. And if they were to give an answer, they were to give it according to Kronos, which is specific moment, amount of time, a specific time. And Kronos is the idea in the world of men and how they relate with time. Are you hearing me? It is the idea and the world of men in how they relate with time. What you have on your wrist is Kronos. When you say what time it is, then you say it's 8.27 or 8.17 or 8.20. That is Kronos. That is you trying to plan, trying to think, trying to apply trying to yield, trying to relate, trying to connect, trying to adjust to Kronos, which is the time of men. Somebody shout hallelujah. But there is also another definition of time, and that's what I want to touch most importantly, because you need to understand this, okay? It's called Kairos. Now, Kairos, the Greek, it means the appointed time in God or for the purposes of God or in the purposes of God. That spiritual moment, that particular season, that particular time which is ordained in the purposes of God. Kairos also means harvest time. It's not in the realm of seed. It's in the realm of harvest time. In other words, Kairos relates with a harvest. It relates with a result. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is time appointed in God, by God, for the purposes of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that is used 86 times in the New Testament. Kronos is 54. Kairos is 86 times in the New Testament. Most importantly, Kairos is the creating power of opportunity and the nature of opportunity. It is the creation of opportunity. And when we're talking about the creation of opportunities, we're talking about the power of opportunity. We're talking about the nature of opportunity. Opportunity has a nature. Opportunity has a power. The creation of opportunity for its power and nature to take course and be activated, to take action of events, human affairs, and life, that is in the realm of Kairos, not Kronos understand me. So your next success is not in the realm of Kronos. It's in the realm of Kairos. Are you hearing me? Your next increase is in the realm of Kairos, not Kronos. Your blessing is in the realm of Kairos, not Kronos. When we're talking about waiting upon God, we don't wait upon God in the Kronos realm. We wait upon God in the Kairos realm. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because in there is the appointed time, the spiritual moment, the God-ordained season for humankind, the harvest time for every seed sown. It's in the Kairos realm. Are you hearing me? And because it is a space of opportunity, it creates opportunity. I have told you always that there is nothing as wonderful, there is nothing as powerful as the power of opportunity because it is the reality that gives you access to do, to fulfill, to execute, to stand, to apply, to reveal, to participate in the ways of life. You could study and graduate and never have the opportunity to have a job. It means your potential will be frustrated because even though you have the ability to do that job, 
and that job has the ability of getting you hundreds of millions of shillings, you never had the opportunity. But some people don't have the opportunity because they do not know how to maximize, how to take advantage of their Kairos moment. Somebody shout hallelujah. John chapter 5 and verses 4. It gives us a story of the pool of Bethesda. And in verse 4, the Bible says that an angel went down at a certain season into the pool. The word there, season. The Bible says the word there, season, is kairos. The angel went down at a certain kairos into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in, the Bible says they were made whole of whatsoever disease they had. In other words, the man spent 38 years at the pool of Bethesda because he did not know how to design the kairos. Are you hearing me? Why? Because if it was in the realm of Kronos, he would know. If the stirring of that pool was in the realm of Kronos, he would know. Because they would know on this debt of that month, of this time and period, this is when the angel comes. But healing at the pool of Bethesda was not in the realm of Kronos. It was in the realm of Kairos. Now, the Bible says that for 38 years, a man failed to calculate, to relate, to connect to Kairos. And because of that, he became sick and he stayed on that pool sick for many years. Thank God, thank Jesus, because he is the author of Kairos. He healed it. Somebody shout hallelujah. But that's a typical example of how 38 years were robbed off of a man's destiny and deliverance because he did not know how to deal with the timing of the Spirit. There are many people who are witnessing and experiencing so high and deep amounts of delay. And it's not because God at one point has appointed kairoses for them in future chronos. But it is because he has availed the realm Kairos and they do not know how to connect to it. That is why the Bible says, having eyes they don't see, having ears they don't hear. Least at any time, the Bible says, they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, when you understand this, you will get rid of unnecessary delays. Some people are delayed unnecessarily. Some people are delayed unwantingly. Some people are running out of time and consoling themselves by scripture because of the deeper ignorance that is within them. And sooner or later, they just start to show you that you're running out of time. Any man running out of time will feel it. And sometimes we preach as minister to everyone as though we assume that every man is in the timing of the Spirit. Because sometimes we minister comfort as with the thought that every man is in the timing of the Spirit. When Paul is talking about his raising, his anointing, his separation and consecration, he says, I was as or like a child, the Bible says, that was born out of time. In other words, Paul knew that with what God had placed on him, there was a delay on his life in plugging into this man called Jesus. Some people think that it was the appointed time of Paul or so to see Jesus on his way to Damascus. But now Paul tells you, no, I am as one born out of due time. In other words, I miss the certain timing of the Spirit. Even though I thank God that by His grace He met me somewhere, but I miss the certain timing of the Spirit. The ministration of grace is in the Kairos realm. It's not in the Kronos realm. God has not put grace in the future. God has put grace in the now. It is prevenient grace. The ministry and mystery of faith in its highest level of demystification is in the understanding of how you deal with Kairos. That is why it's not tomorrow faith is or yesterday faith is. He says now faith is the evidence of things not seen, the substance of things hoped for. If you understand how to deal with your now, 
The operation of faith is effectual in your life. You must know how to seize that moment. You must know how to make that one prayer that changes your destiny forever. I mean, you can pray for 20 years and die, and that's okay. And your wife can become idle because you don't have the results of them. But God has not called you to cry that way. Are you hearing me? There was never a time Jesus delayed the healing of a man. There was never a time in history where Jesus delayed the deliverance of a man. There was never a time Jesus in history in the flesh delayed the moment of a man that was ready to believe him. Even for Mary, for whom was not his time to function, he came to Mary and said, Know ye not that it's not yet my time? Are you hearing me? He told Mary, Know ye not, woman, that it is not yet my time? It was not yet the kairos of Christ. It was not yet even the chronos of Christ to do miracles, signs, and wonders according to the timing and calendar of heaven. It was not yet the time of Christ to do miracles. But a woman with faith came and told them, do whatsoever he tells you to do. Tonight the guests must have wine. And he says, fill these pots with water. And they were filled with water. And eventually every man was served with wine. And there is a mystery there for the first miracle. The first miracle was not provoked out of the person of God according to the timing of God. It was brought out of the person of God according to the faith of a woman who believed God. There is no delay for somebody who is ready to believe in the faith now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. And because you don't understand it, in verse 3 it says, And through faith we understand that the worlds, the edges, the times were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. But he says that is in the realm of understanding. It's not a knowledge they can give you and you receive. It's an understanding that has to come to you by reason of use. The foundation of it must be the wisdom of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. You can change your life tonight. You can change your destiny tonight. You can speak something. You can give an account in the spirit realm that's going to change the trajectory of your life. You can put a burden on Kronos. That's why it tells you do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has its own to worry. Because Kronos Things for men which know how to seize Kairos. Boom. Somebody shout hallelujah. I mean the appointed times of the spirit. When you know how to walk with the appointed times of the spirit. It means you will place burdens on the next days to produce and bring forth what you feel. What you see by the spirit. Jesus never wanted to limit men. In fact in one portion of scripture he says. For brethren you know that it's not yet my Kairos yet to go to Jerusalem. But for you, it's always your kairos. It's somewhere. He says, it's not my time to go to Jerusalem. But for you, it's always your time to go to Jerusalem. And what's the essence of Jerusalem in scripture? Remember, you shall begin from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. So when he said unto them, my kairos is not yet come, but your kairos is always ready. It means that you are always ready to do. Your kairos is always ready for you. Why did Jesus say, it's not yet my kairos? It is because he was talking about the definitive purpose, assignment ordained on his life that was not relating with any human being on that earth. Not everyone shed their blood at Calvary. And no man died for our sins except him. Now for him to do that, no man will ever do it again. That was the Christ Kairos. But he tells men, do not always say that Kairos is not available for you. No, he says, for your Kairos is always ready. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout amen. Kairos also is the definitive mark of discernment. You cannot discern without Kairos. Because Kairos has signs. The Bible says in Matthew 16 verses 1. 
And the Bible says, And the Pharisees with the Sadducees came tempting and desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And the Bible says, And he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. He says, O ye hypocrites, you can design the face of the sky, but ye cannot design the signs of the Kairos. The word there for times is Kairos, not Kronos. He says you can design the face of the sky. You can tell that it's a good weather today. You can look at the cloud and know that the sun is going to shine. You can look at the weather and know that it's going to rain. And today men have advanced. They even give us weather forecasts weeks before, days before. They read the solar system. They interpret the tectonic plates. They understand the world and the weather can be interpreted. Even next week's weather is somewhere on a sudden rudder. Scientifically, men have learned to read. Men read stars. They can tell what star does what and where it goes and what that implies. Even men with sorcery have learned to give men stars and determine destinies and days for men. But the Bible says, but it tells the generation that you know not the signs of the chronos. And Jesus is trying to tell them this simple thing. If you do not know the signs of Kronos, how can I even talk to you about the signs of heaven? This comes first. You must understand how the appointed times of the Spirit work. Because if you don't understand the moments, the seasons of the Spirit, what conversation has God got with you to tell you about the signs of the heavens? How will you discern the signs of the heavens when you cannot understand the signs of the times of the Spirit? That is why he's trying to tell them. He's telling them, you have a problem thinking that you're going to miss the definitive mark of discernment and then ask me to show you a sign outside that mark because Kairos, the moment, the time, the appointed season, these are designers of the Spirit. Without them, you cannot know how to prepare yourself. You cannot know how to prepare yourself. In 2013, in prayer, the Lord gave me a vision. Of what was going to happen in this nation? That was my Kairos moment. I saw. I understood what was going to happen. And because of that Kairos, you know what I did? I took off a time and separated myself in a sort of consecration to hear God more on what he was saying for our nation. And when I got the understanding of what he was saying, you know what? I told people we're going to start for Nero, 2014, 7th August. God had been speaking to me about a year before. And he told me, this is the season, this is the time, this is what's available, this is what I put here. Some people are going to take it, some are going to miss it, some will understand it, some will never understand it, some will disconnect, some will connect, some will increase in it, some will stay static because they never understood the time. But regardless of whether who is and who isn't, your simple responsibility is now that you have the understanding go. Somebody said hallelujah. Do not be deceived that if I refuse to do that, God will not raise another man. He would. Because the giftings and callings of God are without repentance, but the assignment is. Because the assignment is stuck to divine purpose. And if the assignment is stuck to divine purpose, then it is an element of Kairos. If you don't understand how the appointed times of God work, you cannot fully participate in God's intention for that art, for that generation in your time to know what to do, when you ought to do and how to do it. And don't think that God is done moving. That is why from the beginning of there I've been telling you we are in a certain season. 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 And those that have understanding do and those that don't, I understand, and I'm praying for you, and I pray you do. But we are in a certain season. And the man that knows how to lambano this, the man that knows how to aggressively take it, will have a great experience for the rest of the year, but also for the next years ahead of you. Years ahead of us are determined by particular moments in the spirit. For every purpose under the earth, there are seasons and times. There are chronoses and kairoses. Because Kairos defines our experiences. Our experiences are our equipment. 
for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, to the edification of the body. Now, the apostle has to be positioned there to equip fully for the timing. The teacher, the pastor, the evangelist, and everybody that is called must have that ability, must have the ability to teach men the numbering of days. In fact, if I have to go back to Ephesians, I don't know why the church calls it the fivefold ministry. When you read, he says he gets some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. Now, if you go and read the Greek word for and teacher, it's not the word used for and pastors, it's not the word used for and evangelists, it's not the word used for and prophets. In fact, in the literal Greek, it sounds like he gets some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors all to be teachers. Read it. In other words, God has called the apostle to be able to teach. God has called the prophet to be able to teach. God has called the evangelist to be able to teach. God has called the pastor to be able to teach. Teaching is not an office. Teaching is the responsibility of the fourfold. Why? Because we are teaching men to number their days. Read your Bible. So, the prophet has no excuse not to be able to teach. The pastor has no excuse not to be able to teach. The apostle has no excuse not to be able to teach. The evangelist has no excuse not to be able to teach. In fact, the late Reinhard Bonke said, I teach on crusades, I preach the ABCs, but be not confused, I know the XYZs. He means to say, I'm not just doing miracles because I have a gift. I'm not just demonstrating power because I have a gift. I'm not just prophesying because I have a gift. I know the depth of the riches of the glory in Christ. I have tested of the unsearchable things of God, the bottomless things of the Spirit. I've walked by the Spirit. I've been there, done that God, the teacher. I've gone to the end of all perfection. I've seen the broadness of the Word of God. And when He comes back for men, because He's called in the office of the evangelist, to the weak He shall be weak. To the poor He shall be poor. He shall become all things to all men that He might save some. But don't be mistaken for the love that decided to edify than the knowledge that could have puffed him up. That's not ignorance. It's knowing where you belong. But when we are among them that are wise, he says we do impart this wisdom. We do speak this wisdom, which is not the wisdom of this world, which would have been brought to nothing, but the wisdom which is of God, which was prepared the four time before the foundation of the world. For our what? Suffering? No. Glory! The generation we're entering knows God. From the usher to the security guard. From the worshiper to the man in set up. From the one cleaning the tables to the man which is lining the chairs. And all shall know God from the greatest to the least. And no man shall go to his neighbor telling him no God. For all shall know God from the beginning to the end. And when he's talking about the deacons, he says if a man requires to be a deacon or a bishop or a pastor, he requires a good thing. He must be able to do this and that and that and that. And then in the middle he says he must be up to teach. He must behold the doctrine of Christ in the pure conscience. But to find an evangelist that can't explain the New Testament, a prophet that can't interpret Corinthians, a pastor that cannot explain Colossians, that's a problem. The generation coming knows both. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. The Bible says that if we are to say that we are to be deliberate in our time, in this time, to be effective and have deliberate results, he says we must be able to design. I wish I could tell you how many people have lost their way by designing wrongly. I wish I could tell you. But you see, when a man says, I felt led, when a man says, I prayed about it, when a man says, the Lord told me, when a man says, the Spirit tells me, when a man says, I dreamt it, you cannot come and set yourself against their way because they are sure God spoke to them. But when you become spiritual as you grow in God, 
you have the ability to judge certain words. And not every word you judge, you have the ability to tell the man that this is wrong. Are you hearing me? Because there's a difference between if their heart is set to understanding or if their heart is rebelled against understanding. That is why you have spiritual authority. That is why you have a man or a woman of God in your life. That is why you seek divine counsel. That is why you go to your pastor and tell him, this is what I think. Are you hearing me? There are people, what is disturbing them is not the devil. It's not Satan. It has none to do with the devils, the principalities, the powers, the rulers, the spirits of wickedness that are roaming this world. It's the indifference to the timing of the spirit. Some entered early. Some entered late. Some connected to something they were not supposed to connect to. Some disconnected from the thing that they need. Some went a course they were not supposed to go. Some turned away from the course they were supposed to go. Because they do not function in discernment. And how can they discern when the signs are not clear? And how can the signs be revealed when Kairos is not understood? And you could pray and fast for years. But sometimes the way to restoration is to go back to God and ask him, from where did I lose it? Because when you lose it, you can tell. You can mask it up, but you can tell. When you're off the course, it doesn't matter how smart you stay. You can tell when you're off the course. When you're off the course, you can tell. Or at least if a man does not yet know they're off, they will soon know they're off. God is gracious enough to show us. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that is why I tell people it's important, very, very important, to deal with divine instruction very carefully. Because God speaks in Kairos moments. He's a God of periods and timetables. He's a God of periods and timetables. He gave Kronos for the world. He gave you, the believer, Kairos. And the word of God is effective in Kairos. Kronos is simply a receiver, not a participator. Kairos is the ultimate participator in Logos. That is why Kairos is the mother of all Logos, Pathos, and Ethos. Any manner of logic, any manner of good thought, any manner of character, whether moral or spiritual. It is judged in the realm of Kairos, not Kronos. And for a man to set himself against the word in the Kronos of God, I think that is one of the worst mistakes that a human being would ever do. And many of us do it without understanding. Why? Because many times we claim to hear God we never heard. And our hearts are so hard to admit or to even understand that this is my head and not the voice of God. When the voice of God speaks, when the word of God goes out, it must achieve. You know what it means to achieve? He added the word and says, it shall prosper in the thing we're unto. If it is indeed God which led you there, you shall be prosperous there. And some people have a false understanding of prosperity. A man can go the way of destruction, convinced that he's prosperous. And before you know it, they hit shipwreck and go to wit's end in their understanding of prosperity. That's why it's important for you firstly to understand prosperous according to the mind of God. Because Kronos proves it. Kairos teaches it. God strikes a man blind because he set himself against the Kairos. So, on his way to Damascus, criticizing and persecuting the church, he was setting himself against the word. And before we know it, a bright light comes, hits the man's eyes, and it strikes him blind immediately. Why? Why dost thou persecute me also? Who are you, Lord? Why? He had set himself against stopping what God had ordained. God had told his men to preach the gospel. 
Who was Saul to stop them? God smites him blind. In scripture, if you are a reader, a man was smitten with a damp spirit. Why? Because he interrupted the word spoken in Kairos. The Bible says in Luke one twenty, when he's talking about Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. The Bible tells us in verses 20, when the angel was talking to him, he says, Behold, thou shalt be dumb and not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their Kairos. Because you believe not the words that I ordained in Kairos. He says, I will smite you dumb. And the man of God was smitten with dumbness. And up to today, some men are dumb and they do not know. Because you can be spiritually dumb, but you're physically teaching. You're physically ministering. You're physically speaking to people. But in the spirit realm, you're not understood. You don't communicate. You don't release all your emotions. You don't give life. You don't change destinies. You don't have effect on the lives of men. Because you believed not the word which was spoken in the Kairos. How you relate with the appointed times of God defines so much on how your destiny looks like. A word that is spoken in season. When God gives you a word in a particular season, make it personal. Make it personal. Let the word of God speak to you always. Let it not speak to the other person. Hmm, I think they're talking about... Hmm, no, no, no. Let it speak to you. And receive it not as a word of mere men, but even as the word of God. You'll see results. You'll see change. You'll see answers in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say amen. And let me say this also. That every attack of a believer, the devil will ever launch on your life can only be in the realm of Kairos, not Kronos. Not Kronos. Satan works in the realm of Kairos. He tempts in the realm of Kairos. He tests in the realm of Kairos. The killer, the destroyer, the thief that cometh to kill, steal, and destroy. He knows that God works in Kairos. So why would he deal with Kronos? No. Chronos simply shows you the result of spiritual time. What you see on the day of 24th probably did not be begin that 24th day. It probably could have begun on the 12th day of that month. But the manifestation of that was on the 24th day. It's like they'll tell you this person got a disease this day. But the signs and symptoms that killed them happened this day. They started to die the day that disease entered their body. And when men start to leave, disease does not need to be absent for them to leave. There are men who are so alive in disease and some are dead without any sickness in their body. Because they do not know how to work with the principles of the spirit. There's a healthy man that is going to die tomorrow morning. And there's a sick man that is going to walk off that sick bed and live a full life. Because of how they deal with the principles of the Spirit. Because of how they deal with the Word of God. Because of how they deal with the Word that is spoken in the Kairos moment. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout amen. And because Kairos is a realm of opportunity, so Satan attacks opportunity. It's common sense. He tempts where opportunity is. When Jesus is going to the wilderness in Luke chapter 4, it will appear like God took Jesus to test him. But God does not work on the terms of the devil. The Bible says God is not tempted, neither tempted he any man with evil. That means it was not the will of God, it was not in the planning of God in the Kairos moment for Satan to appear to Christ in the wilderness. No. Satan saw a man who was going to enter a season of elevation. He saw a man who was entering a superior rank. And when he saw the Kairos moment, he tried to take advantage of the Kairos moment. Remember, the Bible says he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. 
The Bible says God tempted. He, no man neither is he tempted with evil. That means Satan was not a bait God put in the wilderness for Jesus. No. Jesus was not even supposed to encounter Satan in the wilderness. No. Satan knew that this was a Kairos moment and he took opportunity in the Kairos of the Son of God. Understand this. But if you can see that you're entering a certain season, I tell people, be sensitive when you know that God is elevating you. Be sensitive when you sense that you're entering a more superior rank. Be sensitive when you can discern that something on you has increased because he has a way of intercepting when men are being elevated. He has a way. He has a way. And that is why after the temptation in Luke chapter 4 verses 13, the Bible says, and when the devil had ended all temptation, the Bible says he departed from him for a kairos. Not a chronos. The word there is kairos. He departed from him for a kairos, not for a chronos. In other words, he's not saying he left Jesus today. He said that another day he attacks him. No, he's saying this one for the 40 day you have defeated me. Let me wait for your next Kairos. I will come. In other words, he comes where Kairos moments are. He comes where harvest times are. He comes where our moments are. He comes where our seasons are. He tries to work when we are seizing certain opportunities in the spirit. That's when he likes striking. Because he knows that Kronos is useless. You can never design delay in the Kronos realm. Because that even is relative. That's why it's called the theory of relativity. That is why a man can get into a rocket right now. After eight minutes and something seconds in the sky, that man has traveled way faster than light. And when he's in space, time in space is different from time on Earth. In fact, astronauts will tell you that men in space grow lesser than men on Earth. Because the dimension time can change depending on the space. It's relative. They age slightly slower in space than they do on Earth. And that's why it's a theory of relativity. Are you hearing me? Kronos is relative. Kairos is not. It is definitive. It's distinctive. It's precise. That one works under all laws whether a man is in space or the man is on the earth. Somebody shout hallelujah. So after he had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a kairos. He's waiting for another day when this Jesus will seize a certain experience and then he will come in. And if you go reading through the times of elevation and the life of Christ, the attacks were there also. When he comes sitting on a coat, the young of Anath, on the moment in Jerusalem of his triumph, six days later is crucified. But you see, the elevation had begun somewhere. At the cross, there was an elevation, but he did not know. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Because he doesn't know how to fully design Kairos. He suspects Kairos. But he doesn't know how far. He can tell that you're in your Kairos. But he cannot tell the fullness of that Kairos. He cannot tell the fullness of God's purpose in that Kairos. He cannot tell the whole picture. He can suspect it. But he can't have the full picture. Why? Because God doesn't relate with him in that realm. But he likes to deal with men in that realm. When he tells you that he left him, departed from him for a moment until the next Kairos. It means he always looked at the Son of God to wait for his Kairos moment. That's when he would come in with suggestion. Bow to me and I'll give you the kingdoms of this world. Turn these stones into bread. Do this and do that. It's in the time when the man is led by the Spirit. And at every defeat of Satan in your Kairos, the Bible says more power is given. He says he came back in the power of the Holy Spirit. When you know how to deal with the devil, in the Kairos realm, every time power will be manifested on you. So, 
at every attack of the believer, Lucifer takes chance to scheme when he sees your Kairos moment. He is a master schemer in the realm of Kairos. He's just there to scheme. But also, I realize by the word that to God, every attack of the devil is an opportunity for you, is a Kairos for you. Like, a Kairos will attract an attack. Every attack is a Kairos. Who has understood what I just said? When he's teaching about the seeds that are sown on stony ground, on stony ground, on the wayside, you remember? On the good ground, you remember? When he's talking about the seeds that are sown on the rock, Luke chapter 8, verses 13, he says, And they that are on the rock are they which, when they hear, they receive the word with joy. And these have no roots, which for a while believe, and in the kairos of temptation they fall away. Not in the chronos of temptation. In the kairos of temptation. Who has understood what I just said? In the kairos of temptation, they fall away. If the Bible there uses the kairos of temptation, it only means there is a divine answer to that attack. Because it began by reason of the word in your spirit. When you understand that, you can be the happiest man in the midst of a storm. Because you know that he could not have attacked me if he did not design my time. Slap somebody. I said he could not have attacked you if he did not design your time. Every temptation in the Kairos realm means that there is a designing of elevation in that same realm. There is a design there by God to get you higher, to take you into a superior grace. Satan can only attack what he goes seeing upward. So celebrate when the landlord gets you out of that house. Thank God, because God is working out a far way greater glory for your life. God is raising a church that will pass through the hardest situation of life celebrating and happy, knowing very well that he that began that work in your life, he will see to accomplishment to the day of Christ, that is the author and the finisher of the faith, that is your beginning and the end. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout amen. Tell your neighbor he could not attack if he didn't know that something was coming for me. I say tell your neighbor he could not attack. If he did not know that something was working for me, that is why she chucked you. Because something better was working for you. That is why they expelled you. Because something better was working for you. That is why that disease came. Because something better was working for you, for brethren. Our light afflictions, which are but for a kairos, they cannot be compared to the ways of glory that shall be revealed. Because these work for us a far more exceeding weight and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal you have an incurable disease that's not for a born again believer that's for an unbeliever I'm a believer no situation is permanent because I have moments in God that can change it. I say no situation is permanent for you because there are moments in God that can redeem it. He gave you the ability, He gave you the grace, He gave you the wisdom, He gave you the favor, He gave you the understanding, He gave you the word to change your hour. He said whatsoever you shall bind on us regardless of what the devil does. He shall be bound in heaven. He says whatsoever you loosen on earth, it shall be loosened in heaven. He says you shall decree a thing and it shall be established regardless of what the devil does.
Every attack in the Kairos spells an elevation in the same Kairos. Your weakness will become strength. Receive it! I said your weakness will become strength. What seems like it's not working is going to work most. In the area you are weakest, God is going to put strength. In the area you are not wise, more wisdom will come. In the area you have been tempted, God will work a far more exceeding weight of glory and make you stronger than the man which was not tempted before. That is why he says that no temptation that has befallen you. That is not common. But God will with the same temptation make a way out for you. Why? Because he knows the plans that he has for you. Plans to make you prosper, not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and hope. That expected end. Somebody said, my Kairos is working for me. He gave you the mouth. He said, speak. Hey, speak. He says, whoever shall speak to this mountain, be thou removed from here and be thrown in yonder place. And no doubt in his heart that those things shall come to pass. The Bible says he shall have the things that he shall say. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because the only difference between your next story, your superior rank, your elevation, your growth, your increase, your multiplication is determinant on what you're speaking now. Now open your mouth and speak. Speak. Open your mouth and speak. If you have tongues, speak them. All for me. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around for me. Confess it. All for me, speak. Rapatalaba you. Oh for me. This is the time when the timing of the word of God connects to the opportunity of the spirit. Kronos is submitting to Cairo. You're redeeming the next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years of your life. Speak words. The word of God in your mouth is not limited to a calendar. Calendars are days of men. Speak. All for you. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around for me. All for me. All for me. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. 
broken You were like it In every situation You have never been God of yesterday God of today You're the God of tomorrow You're still the same My very present hand In time for me In every situation You have never failed Yahweh, Yahweh
really need you. Now if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to come now. There are people here, you say as you are speaking, I felt I need to connect to that God. If you say I want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat these words after me, say Jesus. Thank you for your word today. I come to repent of my sins and ask for your mercy and forgiveness. My heart believes that you died for my sins. My mouth confesses salvation for my life. Tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior and born again. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at sonerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.sonero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Venero. Venero, make man.